KCLR Chief Executive John Purcell joins me now and Dr. Kai Crowley, who's a regular on KCLR Live with us uh, from the Airfield Medical Centre in Kilkenny. Um, in an unusual enough step, John, uh, we've decided to do, um, maybe to use you as, a, I won't say a guinea pig, but you've bravely, you're undertaking a test for us. We're very curious about these antibodies tests and we've tied with us to talk through a little bit later on what it's all about, but you're about to be tested now for COVID-19 antibodies. That's right. I'm looking forward to it, Emer. I have to say. I um, hope I don't scream too loudly when the blood has been taken, but apart from that, I'm all up for it. Okay, um, so we're going to let, um, I know that uh, your wife Pauline is a nurse, she's there as well. Um, I should stress that the, the testing kits, they are self-testing kits, it's just Pauline happens to be there with you, John, and since we're doing an interview while this is going on, we're going to get her to assist um, so will you talk us through what it feels like, if there's any pain, and what exactly... Sure, yeah, I mean, um, we, the, it's a very small kit, actually. So I think the first thing I have to do is just have the top of my finger swabbed. Uh, yeah, I a, a small piece of blood is going to be taken. Um, so okay. I've had this done before, giving blood in the blood uh, transfusion clinic. I never like it particularly, so Pauline is just uh, just uh, swabbing my finger now. In goes the needle. Okay. Um, so it's very, it's quite quick. We take it. We think it might take about ten minutes. Um, have you done this for anyone yet, Doctor Kai? Do you think it's something that GPs might be doing at any stage? Yeah. No. It's. It, it, it's hugely interesting, Eimear, and, and thanks a million for inviting me on. Um, obviously, at the moment, as we all know, there is a test. It's a laboratory-based test to show, it, you know, you obviously have to be symptomatic. I suppose the antibody testing, uh, what's really interesting about it, and I think it is going to be the future, is to show whether um, you've developed antibodies or not. Now, at the moment, with the antibody testing, you have, obviously, sensitivity and specificity, which is false positive positives and false negatives and really what people need to know is how accurate the test is to show if I have a positive result that shows I've had it or that if it's a negative result how accurate that it is that I haven't had it and this seemed to be of the order of the magnitude of 98 percent but all the antibody tests can show is really at the moment they can yes. know if, if it's positive that you've been exposed to it what they don't know is are you immune from it that you can't get it again they haven't, they haven't finally nailed that. And is that where a lot of with it. And I suppose how we use that testing. Is that where a lot of people's concerns would arise from that we don't want people to have a false sense of security with these tests that we, we just don't know enough yet. It's still very, very early days. It's still very early. I, I think myself, it will be the future of it um, because people will want to know if they've had it. But remember, we're still at a low enough incidence, thanks be to God, in the community uh, of false po or, or of positives, you know, because there haven't been a huge number of cases, relatively okay, speaking I'm having to Italy, question. England, America. So we're still at a low number of tests. But I think in relation to down the road, I think it will be, a, you know, people will want to know, have I been exposed to it at some stage? Okay. Um, I might try and share with our viewers um, a photograph of the kit that you're using, which is very small, John. Uh, we'll see if we can uh, pop a photograph up here uh, just to show people. I'm not sure if that's, if that's actually working now. Apologies. Uh, there we go. Um, so is this something, do you think, Dr. Thaig, that people will easily be able to do in the future themselves or will they need to go through their pharmacist, their GP for assistance? I, I think, Eimear, in a lot of cases, they, they, this will probably be GP or pharmacy provided, probably GP provided. You know, some people mightn't be that happy to be doing blood tests themselves. They mightn't like going through the whole procedure and then they they might want the reassurance of having a health professional carry it out. Um, some people don't naturally like having blood tests taken. It would be hard to do it yourself. And if you're not medically trained, you know, they'll probably retail for probably, you know, anywhere between 20 and 30 euros or 20 and 40 euros. So looking at if they're going to spend money, they'll want to make sure 
for it, they get the right test. Blood testing, some people just don't like doing it and they want to make sure. But I, I, I do think there will be scope down the road um, in terms of workplace, in terms of even travel, the people who will want to know, have I been exposed or not? And as they're being done more readily and there'll be more objective findings, we'll know whether immunity is confirmed by the fact that you show up. You see there's two antibodies there, IgM and IgG. The IgM is sort of the recent infection if you've had it the last sort of week to two weeks, an IgG will show whether you've had it a couple of months ago. Um, and it's very interesting cutting edge stuff, Emer, because you know the, these tests have only landed in Ireland in the last couple of weeks. So there's huge interest, uh, huge interest for employers, employers particularly to know if, if people are coming back, that they've actually been exposed to it. Okay, and it's actually a Kilkenny-based company based in St. Kieran's College that supplied us with this test kit. Um, okay. my bio.ie um, so um, it's just interesting to see um, these uh, coming on stream but as you said um, it does look like they're very much um, targeting we'd say the GPs and the pharmacists for the time being anyway that uh, more likely that people um, will go down that route um, and yeah. John just kind of let, let people know how you're feeling right now before we talk to you about maybe why we but you're the chosen one for this antibodies test. Well, my finger is a bit, uh, the life has nearly been squeezed out of it by my uh, nursely wife and um, because we were, uh, um, my blood was flowing a bit slowly and we had a bit of an issue getting it up the capillary because it's a very small little uh, kind of straw thing, barely more than a millimeter. But I'm fine, it's totally painless. Um, and we, we have just set a timer now for about nine minutes. Um, it takes 10 minutes before you get a result. So I've just done that. So I feel perfectly fine. It's completely painless. Okay. And John, um, you might tell us as well a little bit about your own family situation because um, the reason why I asked you about doing the test is that you're not sure if you had COVID or not, but certainly a very close contact who you live with. Um, your daughter, she was diagnosed um, quite early on during the pandemic. That's right. I, I have three daughters um, and uh, uh, we think two of them have it. One of them actually works in the health service and got uh, a COVID test uh, and came back very quickly within 24 hours to confirm that she was positive. So the whole family went into isolation. This was around uh, the middle of uh, March, about a week before the lockdown. Um, so we observed all the social distancing and so on. And luckily, uh, the other daughter didn't have a test, but had the exact same symptoms as the as the uh, my daughter who tested positive. What were um, the symptoms, John? By the way, out of interest, because so many different experiences for people. The symptoms, the main symptom, yeah, the 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 main symptom that manifested itself was the loss of taste and smell. Um, and about two weeks into it, or less than two weeks into it. Uh, both developed coughs um, and slight breathlessness, but uh, that passed pretty quickly and it was, it was mild overall. Neither of them suffered from a fever uh, and so on. But what was interesting was uh, that sometime in February, Pauline had what I would characterize as the worst dose of the flu that I've ever seen her suffer from. And we wondered if perhaps that was uh, COVID. I don't know. Um, but she definitely had a very bad cough. She was feverish and so on. Um, and she was confined to bed for the best part of the week. So it's quite interesting from my point of view. So I do have a confirmed case um, and another case that we thought and then something, you know, another member of the family had symptoms that were consistent with it. But, but it was before it even arrived in Ireland. So it'll be quite interesting to see, I think. And do you think yourself, John, that you, uh, that you had it at any stage? Is there any indication at all? I don't know. I, I joked with people that I had a bit of hypochondria in 19 because uh, when, as soon as, as the, you know, the, the word came through that we actually had a, a confirmed case in the house, it was quite, um, I have to say, the, the, the feelings that I felt took me back uh, quite a bit because at that stage it was raging in Italy uh, and we were seeing nightly on our TV program uh, you know awful scenes from Italy and so I did spend quite a while wondering was you know am I going to get it 
Am I going to wake up in the morning being unable to breathe? And so on. And seeing there was such a wide variety of um, symptoms at that stage, you know, the slightest sniffle or the most isolated sneeze, I kind of had myself written off. Um, so, I, but, I, but I didn't develop anything that I felt in any way substantially unwell at all. What was very difficult for you from a family point of view was isolating within the home, which Ty has talked to us uh, on the programme about, which is not easy to do. Um, you know, I know these days, modern homes, um, you know, there's on suites and you can kind of distance from people in some homes, um, but still very, very hard when it's your daughter and you want to be able to make sure that they're okay and everything. It must have taken its toll on the whole family. Yeah, it's, it, it's, not a, it's not a pleasant place to be in when you don't know, when you hear the stories of how the disease progresses and when somebody, obviously, that you're so close to is confined to a room and you really have to keep your distance, you know, leave meals outside on a tray and then stand away. And for like two or three, um, two or three meters that would be the closest that you'd get and then I, 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 w I was quite worried for a while when you could hear them coughing um, you know in, in that stage of it and as I said it was ongoing initially at the time so you would as a father you would be very worried and that was hard so I can only we were lucky we were able to deal with it from the home um, so I can only um, imagine what it must be like for people whose loved ones were in hospital with it and unable to visit them and so on it must be very difficult. A lot of people who work in healthcare type have said to us um, that just kind of in, in casual conversations I'd have with them off air sometimes, they've said to me, Ema, it's more, I, when I say, are you worried you'll get COVID? They have said to me, I'm not worried I'll get it. I'm worried which strain I'll get. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, the, the, and, and John tells that story, that's, that's, I can't anymore add to that story because you know anyone from hospitals I met they were they were worried okay you know in the early stages if they got it they were hoping they would get it earlier and that it would be mild but for people who did get it there was people that got really really sick and you you can't tell are you going to be the one that gets the mild strain or are you going to be the one that gets the very severe uh, form of it and end up on a ventilator and then healthcare workers that got it terrified that they were going to bring it home to their families and you know whatever about themselves I, I suppose just listen to people you know and I include myself in this I made that decision to do health care this is what I do and this is what I enjoy doing my family necessarily didn't sign up for uh, being exposed and I, I know from talking to people in hospitals they were always very worried that they were going to bring something home and that maybe would affect their family members far more, more than it affected them. Yeah, that's, it's a big concern for your family uh, more than anything else. And John, was it very awkward for you? Because obviously you're running a busy radio station um, and you had to run everything remotely especially during yeah, that well, period. Yeah, it's amazing how much you can do uh, remotely. And um, we kept the show on the road uh, during that time. And it, it was difficult. I mean, it was, you know, because looking back on it now, having got used to remote working, um, it doesn't seem so bad, but it was very unfamiliar at the start. And we didn't know what way it was going to go because we have to remember that, you know, the lockdown came pretty suddenly when it came. And another factor that I would add in that was, you know, that on reflection, looking back, that made it quite awkward and, and difficult was that you have this kind of two week window. So um, there was a time where you're actually wondering, am I going to get worse now? So there is a kind of a countdown um, basis for it. So I knew someone who had it. I was wondering, did I have it myself? And I was running the countdown um, in my head. So number one you had an expectation of getting it then when you get to the first week you were kind of wondering oh I'm nearly through the two week period now so you were on the kind of countdown thing and I have to confess I quit looking at the tv news um, because wow. there was every part of a bad news kind of story coming out about the person who thought they didn't get it and then got it and died overnight or whatever so it's quite you know it, it's a it's a difficult um 
it's a difficult uh, scenario to kind of run through because there's so many different types of cases of it that it seems to me. Yeah, and I'm just thinking um, your result is probably imminent there, John, probably just a couple of minutes left. Um, yeah. And is there anything happening with it there with the colour or is it like a pregnancy test or what is it like to look at? I'm just wondering. Don't, don't tell us that. <laughs> <laughs> Twins. Um, there is an extent that I'm kind of bedeviled by um, paranoia that we haven't done it properly and also the fact that my eyesight isn't necessarily fantastic. Well, these are the and big I think, worries are, 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 are I think I see a line. I may have to absent myself for a second and call my um, beloved uh, wife. I, clearer, I think clearer. I see. I think I see a line on it, but I don't exactly know what the line means, if you know what I mean. Um, okay. Um, that's probably one of the, the issues people will have, tied issues like that. Um, you know, reading the test, doing the test properly as well. That, um, you know, that's really important if, if you want to get any kind of a, a result. Can Pike hear me there? I wonder. Yeah, I can. I, I can. Sorry, it just it, it was late picking that up. Yeah, it, it, it is the issue, and just looking at it initially before, and there seemed to be a couple of um, different areas, and you know, there was an S and a B, and, and like I was struggling to see initially what it is. So I, I'm intrigued to see. I presume it'll be a little bit like a pregnancy test. It has to show up a line to show that it, it's completed, and then whether IgG or IgM show up as a line. Okay. So what, what seems to be showing up to me, uh, Tyg, is C. As a, the line seems to be at C rather than IgG or IgM. Okay. okay. And on the instruction manual, because again, there's different tests, but uh, I think we'll have to go to the instruction manual. If I was to make a betting guess, not having looked at anything, I would say C means the test is completed. Okay. And if there isn't a line at IgM or IgG, that, that would mean that you haven't been exposed or your blood is not showing up an antibody. But that's... Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm looking at what, the, what it says here is, it says uh, two lines appear at the IgG positive. Um, one colored line should be in the control line region and the colored line appears in IgG test line region. The result is positive for stars covid uh, uh, 2 virus um, and the other one is uh, yeah so i don't think that, that where i think i see the line is at c and so i don't think i'm positive based on this test result okay yeah um so john are you are you disappointed in a way because if you had it been positive at least uh, that would that that would be all, well I know it's that false confidence. Then, on the other hand, we were talking about Thai. You don't want to have that either because we don't know how long the antibodies would last. But it looks well, now like he wasn't exposed to COVID. Well, it's, you see, this now is a very interesting topic. And actually, it's, it's for discussion purposes, it's actually a great result because if it was positive, you're going to have to know it's positive. But because of false negatives, you still might have it. So if, if I were you and you got a few more tests, I would t check it once or twice more because your percentages might change depending on the number of times you do it. Um, so it does bring into that, you can't, like clinically, you were in a house with probably, certainly one person that had it for proven and probably the second person that had it. Um, you would have done very well um, to, to self-isolate with a, within a housing environment, no matter how well you do. Um, so I, I wouldn't say it's definitely negative by any stretch of the imagination. I don't think you could 100% say you're negative it. Okay. What I, what I think um, it does show, though, is um, it's, it's a good ad. If I, if I haven't got the antibodies and I haven't got it, then I would think that I'm a good ad for hand washing and social distancing and maintaining all the stuff that we're told to do because... Obviously, you know, we were in close proximity to people. So, I mean, 
I had to say I smiled at times when I would see on the television, um, you know, people wearing um, hazardous, uh, whatever you call it, hazmat suits yeah. in intensive care units. And at the same time, I was standing two meters away from someone who tested positive for it. And yet by keeping my distance, washing my hands, wiping the, the door handles, making sure that all the um, cutlery and all so on was kept, followed the correct way, it appears that perhaps um, yeah. I was able to protect myself for it. So I think it just reiterates the message to keep that's, your distance, yeah. wash your hands. I mean, that's, and so that's a very, very good point. Yeah. And I, I think that distance, you know, when you look at people in hospital who were caring for people, they were, it was going to be very hard to stay away with people coughing, etc. They were still minding them, nursing them, caring for them. Whereas, you know, that distancing and hand washing is, is really, really important. But it, I, I think this is fascinating, actually, because it, it brings up all the issues around the antibody testing that we just don't know enough about yet. Okay, well, there's lots more questions and um, we're looking forward to lots more answers on KCR Live. Uh, Ty, thanks for all your contributions to date. And John, thanks for sharing your story as well, because it's very difficult, um, you know, to do something like that live and to talk about it as well. So we appreciate that. And do you think that you might maybe do another test in the future, bearing in mind what you've heard there from the doc? I think so, absolutely. I think test and trace is absolutely um, the key to this whole thing. And the more people we can test and the longer that we can, the, the better we can test, uh, I think the better protected we'll be um, because it really is a case of isolation and dealing with the cases. And I, I, if there's one thing to come out with, of this, I would say it's to people is to keep your distance and not lose the discipline that we've all practiced so well over the last couple of months.